Now to a story of forgiveness and love. And it's a very personal one that Kelly is sharing with us. That's right. Uh -huh. I mean, I had a wonderful mom who supported me and loved me, but the truth is, is there was always a piece of me that was kind of missing. And for 30 years, my dad was absent in my life. A um, few years ago, I reached out to him, and this is what happened. For as long as I can remember, it was me and my mom. My understanding of where my dad was as a kid was that he was not really ready as a father. I was angry at him, I was disappointed in him, I had all those feelings of abandonment. I think as a kid, you just feel like if they're not there, they don't want to be here. So that's what I felt, and that feeling sucked. As the years went on, I didn't want any connection. I remember oh, telling the security on my team when touring, if, you, if this man comes to the gate, do not let him in. I didn't want to deal with that at the time. And it wasn't until I had Titan, my first, and I said, I really need to know him. I, I want to meet him. And by the way, this was after I lost my mother, because I lost my mother three weeks after Titan was born. So at that time, I think I still had these feelings of like, oh my God, I have no parents. And it was like, no, you do. You have one left. Next thing I knew, I was at a hotel in Atlanta, and I was on my way to walk in to meet him. Before I walked in, I had all these thoughts of what I was going to say. I had all these questions lined up. And as soon as I saw his face, it was a blank. So I sit there and I listen to him for almost two hours. And all the things I'd heard on one side of the story from my mother, God rest her soul, he had answers to some of them. So some of the pages of this book of us were filling in. I can only imagine what it felt like to have everything that you want to say for so many years to your child. I just allowed him the space. And it was incredible. Underneath all the disappointment and hurt and anger and fear, that's somebody you love. He was doing the best he could with what he had. Because when we actually got a chance to talk, he's telling me about his dynamic with his father and his father's father. How can one learn how to be something when they weren't taught? I learned that we are not perfect and it broke my heart to know that there's gonna be something about me that my kid is gonna be disappointed about. Something, you don't do it intentionally, of course, but you have to allow space. You're not gonna get it right every time, and that's okay. And I had to give my dad grace. Even with my mother, I had to give her grace for all the things she didn't know how to do as a mom. And as a parent, maybe it's because I am a parent that I see it like that. But as parents, we have to give our parents grace. It's never too late. Forgiveness is always right there. Oof, it is never too late. Well, Miss Kelly Rowland, let's welcome your father. Absolutely. Christopher Lovett. Come on <laughs> in, Christopher. Oh, you got me so <laughs> Hey, Dad. Hey. <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> Say hello. Hi, Christopher. Hi, how you doing? What a beautiful story this is. We Hi. want to hear all about it. We're going to take a very quick break, and we're going to come right back and speak with Kelly and her father coming up right after this. <laughs> We're back with my guest co-host, Kelly Rowland, and her father, Christopher Lovett. Uh, Christopher, we heard Kelly's point of view, what, what she felt like when mm. she was walking. And she actually said Jay-Z was the one who said to her when she was deciding whether to meet with you. Mm. What did Jay say? He said, love is all about risk. You got to decide if you're going to jump. You're going to jump? That's Are you going to jump? Are you going to jump? So we know exactly what Kelly was feeling. Mm -hmm. what, were, what were you feeling when you finally laid eyes on your daughter? I know you'd probably seen her on TV and things, mm -hmm. but what was it like seeing her in person? I didn't believe it. Yeah. It, was, it was just, 
it, it was just like a dream, really. It yeah. was. And uh, same way I feel now. I don't believe this now. <laughs> were you... So, uh, mm -hmm. Were you following her? I mean, obviously, you, you hadn't seen her since she was little. Were you... Did you watch her on Destiny's Child? Did you say, that's my girl, when when her career was going, going Yes, on. yes, many times, many times. And um, people used to tell and say, I saw your daughter. And uh, I used to sit there and say, well, I didn't. And it used to hurt. Mm -hmm. So when Kelly started uh, performing in certain places, I followed her. Mm -hmm. And when I did, go to a couple of places and everything. I didn't get a chance to see her because they, the security wouldn't let me mm -hmm. see her. It was very, very... It was kind of... It was, it was sad, really. Well, you wanted to go... And, Kelly, you said that you said to the security, don't let him in. Why, mm -hmm. why were you kind of that adamant? Well, I, well. I, I, I think that, you know... And, and we've discussed this. Like, right. I, I think that there was a... Pr I was trying to protect myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was me trying to protect myself. I wasn't ready to deal with those feelings. And I think that in that time, you have to tell yourself, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's never, of course, to hurt him, you know, but mm -hmm. there's you know, responsibility on both sides as far as, like, all of this is concerned. And I'm just kind of, I'm a kid in the middle. You're a kid. And yeah. I'm a kid in the middle, so it's like I I only heard one side, and that was the side that I that I took at the time. And that's why it was so freeing to hear him speak. Yeah. Those, those two hours in which I talked about, and, and just to hear how everything was coming together. Because you probably had him pictured as this sort of not a good person. Yes. That's who he was in your mind. Yes, yes. Because that's what you'd been told. Yes. Do you think you would have sought out your father if your mother were alive? Do you think that would have been... Did you think about that? I, you know what? I think that there was um, a, a moment where I just... I didn't know how she would feel about yeah. it, and her feelings at the time kind of really trumped his. And, mm -hmm. and there was a, a moment where... I, I was like, I have to, I have to meet mm -hmm. him, and I don't want anything to happen to him, mm -hmm. and I don't want to have any regrets. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity that, that we got to meet each other, that was just a breath. What did you want to tell Kelly? Because she knew one story. Mm -hmm. So what was it that you wanted her to know about what happened and why? Well... <laughs> I wanted her to hear the other side of the story mm -hmm. because uh, some of the things that were said, it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that other people said, it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get a chance to see her. And I told a couple of people mm -hmm. that what happened, but they really actually didn't believe it. So I wanted to tell Kelly. I want to tell Kelly that I loved her, and I never have gave her up. And even when they left, when they left Atlanta, I didn't even know that they left Atlanta. Right. I didn't hear Kelly left Atlanta until about, I would say about three or four years. Can I tell them what you're referring to? That was yeah. when my mother's job, she was a nanny, my mother's job yeah. moved her to Houston. Uh, you're right. And you're he right. didn't know that yeah. I, and I left. Didn't know. What was it like hearing your dad say to the grown Kelly, I love you? Whew. It was... Hold up. <laughs> it was, um... It was necessary. Mm. It was necessary to the little girl in me that needed to hear that. It was necessary to hear it from a man. It, it was necessary to hear it from my father. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about all the tumultuous relationships and trying to figure out men, like, that is the base and the foundation of it psychologically. So when mm -hmm. I'm talking to therapists and I'm asking them about this, and it, it all runs back mm -hmm. to the abandonment issue. Mm -hmm. And people, like, make jokes of that sometimes. It's like, oh, well, she has abandoned. No, I, I actually had an abandonment mm -hmm. issue. You really did. And it's some seriousness to that. And it's once you, like, kind of tackle your way through that, you're helping to navigate your way through trying to have functional, as functional as possible relationships. A lot of people at home have, are estranged from loved ones yeah. and they haven't spoken because yeah. they can't forgive. Yeah. They cannot do it. They right. say what he did or what she did was too wrong. Yeah. I can't. For someone at home who's wondering, should I call? Should I do it? Yeah. What, what would your advice be, Kelly? 
Whew, I'd have to say, brace yourself and ask yourself a couple of questions. Am I ready for this? Am I ready for no matter the outcome, mm -hmm. whether it's good or mm -hmm. bad? Because the truth is, is that you don't want to set yourself up. Everybody's always scared of the mm -hmm. other side, and you don't know if it's going to be this person embracing you with open arms mm -hmm. or if they're not ready. And if they're not ready, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's kind of their way of shielding you from themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to allow you into their mess at the time, it's not intentionally just mm -hmm. calling them a mess, but I'm just saying, if they don't want to allow you into that world, they obviously know that it's already hard enough dealing with mm -hmm. themselves. And they, if they don't want to allow you in that space, that's okay. Then mm -hmm. set yourself free from that. But I'm, I'm, I really feel for them because there's so many feelings sure. involved. And just know that yeah. you are loved regardless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you are loved. And, I, and surround yourself with people who want to support mm -hmm. you and love and dote mm -hmm. on you. Christopher, just real quick at the mm -hmm. end, did you ever say, did you ever feel like you had to say you were sorry? Oh, yes, many times. Yeah. Every, yeah. Many I know, times. Daddy, Daddy. Uh, every, time, every time. Every time, every time. It's like every time we're on well, the phone. Every time. I have to remind him to call. I'm like, Daddy, yeah. call me. Well, I don't know, baby, if you're busy. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? We're happy that you all got back together. We're happy that forgiveness is in the air. Absolutely. You guys, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. We man. love you. Love thank you so thank much, you. Christopher. Thank we'll be back right after this. By the way, she's so good at this job.